I'm here with Skip Peterson at the Discovery Concorde d'Elegance. Skip, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on here today? today? Mm -hmm. It's the sixth annual Boonshoff Museum of Discovery Concorde d'Elegance. This is a fundraiser mm -hmm. for the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery, which is a hands-on learning museum. And uh, we started as a fundraiser six years ago. Uh, we've grown every year. We were featuring Cadillacs and BMWs and street rods and race cars this year. We've got 119 cars on the grounds today, mm -hmm. uh, surrounded here by these gorgeous Cadillacs, which are huge. Uh, we will probably expect 2,500 to 3,000 spectators to come through. So I noticed that you said that you uh, feature different cars every year? Absolutely. Uh, we try to feature a, both a European and, and a domestic make mm -hmm. each year. Uh, we have 19 classes of cars all together. They're all by invitation only. They send in a nomination form. They're all antiques. They're all mm -hmm. restored. It's not, they're not uh, hot rods. It's not a cruise in. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do want it to be in a in a casual setting. Mm -hmm. We love it out here in the trees. Uh, we get to close the road off and, uh, and have a great afternoon. My name is Bob Schmidt. Uh, I'm the owner of this 1920 Model T Ford touring car, uh, which was built uh, and sold for about $695 back in 1920. It had uh, electric starter, demountable rims and uh, a few other options on it. Uh, one of the things that people always ask me at car shows is what is this expandable rack on the side here and that's probably the most inexpensive part of the car but in a Model T Ford the driver's door does not open and therefore they would use that as a storage area for tools, picnic hampers, luggage, whatever. This car also has the actual um, varnished wood, wooden spokes. Many of them later were painted. The horsepower of the car is 22 and a half horsepower, uh, which is plenty for the roads of the day because it was not designed for speed, it was designed for ruggedness. Okay, my name's Ron Bennett, I'm from Kettering, Ohio. And this particular car I've had for about six years and it's uh, actually I'm about the fourth owner of it. It was delivered new in New Jersey and then a, another gentleman in the Cadillac Club had it, and I was looking for a 66 Coupe de Ville, which is what this is. And uh, so I bought it from him, and it's uh, got 55,000 uh, 55, original miles on it. Uh, everything is original on it except the paint. All the chrome was original, the top, the interior, the upholstery, and everything is original. My name's Wayne Turner, uh, Dayton, Ohio. And uh, this is my passion. It's buddy number five. They only made seven of these wagons. They were done by Hess Eisenhardt of Cincinnati, Ohio. And when I met Willard Hess years ago, and I, he showed me photos of the seven, I became obsessed with them. And I found six of the seven. And I'm eternally hopeful that I'll find uh, buddy number two, which is the only one I haven't found. And uh, this one was really exciting for me to find because it was delivered to Dixon Cadillac originally of Hollywood. And, uh, Harry Carl had ordered this for Marie McDonald. Uh, it, later on though, this became Joe Lewis, the, the Brown Bomber's car. And I was astonished to find that out. I didn't know that when I bought the car. And anyhow though, uh, it took 10 years to get it this far. The hard part was the uh, wood graining. This is a car I was obsessed with when I was a younger man, about 25. And that's been nearly 25 years ago. I became obsessed with 53 Eldorados. And <laughs> I've had six of them total, but this one here was delivered to Columbus, Ohio, new. And uh, it's a great car. I've driven it out of state on a lot of trips. It's about a 20-year-old restoration now, but it's still a real treasure. I really take care of the interior. I very rarely let the top down. I don't want the sun to hit that leather. And it's a real treasure. It's a 47 limousine. This is a whole different baby because the comfort zone when you're on one of these long wheelbase cars is, is pretty cool. I'm Craig Morris from Muncie, Indiana, and I collect a German and British sports cars, and this happens to be a 72 uh, TII BMW, which is um, a very low production. Most of these cars were raised, and uh, this one actually survived with 60,000 miles. It's all original, um, except for the rims that I changed, but it has factory air, which is the Burr air conditioning unit, which is pretty rare. And it's just a great, fun car to drive. It gets a lot of attention wherever it goes. I'm John Dixon. I'm with Taj McGarage of Dayton, Ohio. This is a 57 Porsche Carrera GT Speedster. 
It's uh, by Carrera GT. That means that nomenclature means it was made without undercoating, uh, saving light weight. It's vinyl rather than leather. It has a factory roll bar, aluminum gas uh, filler through the hood. You'll see the pea shooter and a badging on the where it says Carrera. That was for the uh, Pan, Pan American Carrera race where they got their names. Porsche later named all all 911s after 1984 Carreras, but that's how they originally got the start. This car is one of the cars in the Taj Mahal of Dayton, Ohio. It's number 67. It's a 550 Spider. It was built for the autos, or excuse me, the auto show in Paris in 1955. It's uh, one of 90, and there's probably 40 to 50 of these left. This car is an aluminum-bodied car. It was called a, a giant killer because it could be cars like the Ferraris with three liters. This had about 110 horsepower, top speed of 130 miles an hour. Uh, my name is Darwin Bruce, and I'm showing a 1977 Lincoln Continental Town Car. Uh, the car was originally one of six, 68,160 of this particular model built. Uh, it's a uh, pretty large car. It's 233 inches long, weighs 6,461 pounds, has a 460-inch engine uh, that puts out uh, 208 horsepower, 365 foot-pounds of torque at 2,000 RPM. Hi, I'm, I'm Bob Baco and uh, I live in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, the interior of the car is uh, original. The car was painted in 1983 and uh, everything pretty much on the car is original except well, we did redo the chrome and uh, we've enjoyed it a lot. It's a 1971 Eldorado, the first year of the convertible with the front wheel drive. Okay, my name is Cliff Finke from Cincinnati, Ohio, and this is a 1951 Oldsmobile 98 convertible. I, I, I bought it at a, an auction and uh, uh, took it down to bare metal, repainted it, redid the whole car completely. Everything's back to original. The way it came off the assembly line. My name is uh, Robert Gibson. I'm from Independence, Kentucky, and uh, my father bought the bought this automobile in 1936. It was a used automobile for $230, and uh, we done all the restoration except the engine and uh, the gauges and the chrome. The rest of it, me and my wife done. She done all the upholstery work, so uh, it's a home restoration. Yeah, I'm Lee Hughes uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio. This is a 1947 Cadillac 60 Special. Uh, it was the top of the line. Cadillac uh, except for the limousine in 1947. So I bought this one and uh, was able to use parts from my uh, original 19 uh, or at least purchased in 1956 47 Cadillac in this one. So actually I still have uh, many parts for my original car in this 1947 Cadillac uh, which has been restored. Lois Bigler, live here in Dayton, Ohio. This is a 1934 DeSoto Airflow. It was a rather unique design for the time frame. Uh, it, it was, in fact, the design was started in 1929 by the Chrysler Corporation and was, in fact, uh, uh, tested in a wind tunnel. The design was tested in a wind tunnel for aerodynamics. Uh, it has several unique features in that the uh, rear seat is forward, so you had a much smoother ride, and that was one of the claims to fame, fame of airflow of, of that particular time. With the overdrive transmission that is in the car, it drives on the interstate at 65 miles an hour in a very smooth ride and does very well. So here we are at the Discovery Concourse d'Elegance, and who comes walking by but Bob Stevens from Cars and Parts Magazine. So every time I see him at a show, I always grab him real quick and ask yeah, him to be... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's busy. He's trying to get some work done, but here we are interrupting him there. So have you got a chance to walk up and down the, the field there? Yes, I have. Yes, yeah, I have. Yeah. It's, it's always an impressive uh, exhibition here of cars, really rare stuff, high quality stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just some beautiful, beautiful cars here that Packard race car. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. Jesse Vincent, uh, who was the chief engineer for Pack, and that was his little creation. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. yeah, a little uh -huh. motel speedster, and it's, uh, it's, it's a neat piece. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's just a lot of nice stuff here. 51 Olds convertible, which is very, very rare. Um, but that's the only one I've seen in years. And uh, just, just some nice cars here. Very good. Okay. Uh, my name is Bill Krabacher. I'm the owner of this 61 Ford T-Bird. 
I've owned the car approximately four years, and in four years it's been in restoration all of the time. It was far, found in a barn out in Indiana. When I bought the car, it had an original 5,500 miles on it, uh, but there was a lot of deterioration of materials and so on from having set for so long. Uh, we uh, went through and took the car down bare metal and gutted it, and then after that, uh, uh, fully restored it from the ground up, and everything has been re either rebuilt, replaced, rechromed, or repainted. It has a 390 cubic inch engine, V8, 300 horse, uh, and it moves pretty good. Uh, very consistent at 10 miles to the gallon. My name's Nelson Faulkner. I'm from St. Paris, Ohio. This is a 63 Mercury Monterey, four-door sedan. It has a rear power window. Uh, I've owned the car seven years. I bought it off in the state. It's an all-original car. Still has the original paint on it. All the interior is all original and all the chrome is still original on it. Good afternoon. My name is Charles Bailey. I'm the owner of this 1959 Ford Retractable. It was my wife's car. She bought it in 59 and drove it for a number of years as her daily driver. We decided to have it restored, and while it was being repainted, she was uh, killed in an automobile accident and never did get to see it finished. My name is Charles Kleps, and this is a 1927 uh, Marmon Special. Uh, we bought it off of eBay for $200, and then after reg registration, restoration, this is what it looks like. It's a pretty unique little car, and uh, but it's mechanic which all original, and uh, we've already driven it in a great American race from uh, San Antonio, uh, Texas to Anaheim, California. Okay, this is a 1933 Auburn 12165 Salon Speedster. I acquired the car uh, in 1963 out of a field in Brownsville, Pennsylvania. The car was a complete wreck. Uh, the frame and the wheels and the motor were in a field in the back in mud and the parts of the body were uh, in the barn. I bought the car from the guy who owned it at the time for a thousand dollars. I worked on it for 36 years. It was finished in uh, 19, August of 99, so the car is uh, just a little bit over three years in restoration. Cecil Riser. Yeah, it's a 54L. Went to Kansas City and got it earlier this year. It's got a 331 motor in it. Uh, there was 2,100 of them made originally, and there's probably maybe a couple hundred of them left. My name's Jack Dwyer, my wife's name is Claire, and we own this 1931 Hupmobile. The car, when it was new, cost $995. It was the bottom line automobile for that year. This car has about 27,000 miles on it. It's been repainted five years ago, and the interior was done in 78. The uh, trailer on the back is a Mullins trailer. It was built by the Mullins Boat and Trailer Company in 1935. They built them for three years. At that time, the trailer was sold for $119 because it was the middle of the depression they didn't sell very many and they quit building them the car has a six cylinder engine has will put out 70 mile an hour with a 70 horsepower engine with an, and the advertising says that it will have burst of speed to 78 mile an hour uh, the advertising also says that it could go from 5 to 50 mile an hour in 20 seconds which was very good for those days I'm Iris Winburn and uh, I'm one of the co-owners of this vehicle. It's owned by Roland Winburn from Dayton, Ohio. It's a 1954 Rolls-Royce Silver Wraith limousine and it was built in 1954 for His Majesty the Ambassador to Vienna, Sir Geoffrey Wallinger. I'm Ron Corsi and this is my favorite toy. It's a 1958 Mercedes sedan. It has uh, four wheels, four wheels uh, independently suspended. It has a four-cylinder aluminum engine and uh, four speeds on the column. It's a very agile car, very good on backcountry roads that curve. Uh, a lot of fun to drive and a lot of fun to have. My name is Rick Graff. This is a 68 911S. 
This particular car uh, did not have a sunroof uh, top, so I found a wanted a sunroof. Found a vehicle that was wrecked, and uh, uh, pretty much from the the pillars on up, replaced the the roof entirely. Um, also fitted the car with the uh, uh, air conditioning. With the 911s, there's a lot of components you can mix and match from later years, so I, I did upgrade the engine considerably. It puts out about 200 horsepower and kept the, the stock appearance.